Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Rashid Hussain, and uh, I'm the head of SNE department at Innopolis University, Russia. Um, today's webinar is about um, about secure system and network engineering department, and what do we have, what do we require, and what would you have after uh, graduation if you study with us in this department. So as you know, it's a master program. Um, and what is SNE uh, in essence? Uh, I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit and then we will move to other procedures, for example, admission and the contents of curriculum and everything. Uh, basically, uh, SNE comes from University of Amsterdam, where it was established back in 2003. And um, what we do is that we focus on open source standards. And it is also called OS3, which I will uh, explain in a moment. Uh, and what do we have in SNE is the, is the mixture of both uh, security and network engineering. So we have secure system and network engineering. And well, its technical orientation is basically the, the uh, combination of two broad spectrums that are engineering and development. So we don't produce uh, pure engineers and we don't produce uh, pure developers, but we produce something uh, in between where they can work in both engineering departments and as a developers as well. And we provide uh, hands-on experience uh, in, in a very extensive way which uh, differentiates us from the rest of the universities and the programs therein. Um, this program has been uh, announced as best program for three or four consecutive years in, um, uh, in Netherlands as a part of their government uh, regulation bodies and they have, uh, they have announced it to be the best master program in computer science. So why do we call it OS3? Because uh, as I said before, we focus on open standards and then we consider open software and open security. So we believe in openness in, in every direction. And we also call it a rider because it's uh, extremely rigorous, it's intensive, it's demanding, it's um, expensive and rewarding as well. So at the same time, uh, all these attributes add together and form uh, SNE. It's open source because uh, today, uh, I mean, open source is a demanding feature in, in industry and it has uh, gained a lot of attention and attraction from the industry. That is why it is better to focus on open source rather than proprietary softwares and other solutions. While studying with us, you'll have an opportunity to improve your research skills and your development uh, skills as well. Because we have two research projects that I will talk about in a moment. And besides uh, uh, these hard skills, you'll, you'll have a chance to improve your soft skills as well. For example, you'll be working in teams and you'll be working both um, uh, in, 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 a, in a high number of people, team, and uh, in a team where you will be working only with one peer. So it, it depends on the project and the course as well. So what do we aim at? Well, we uh, emphasize more on theory rather, uh, sorry, more on practice rather than theory. And for that, we need to have a very strict intake procedure. And that is because we want to keep the quality of SNE and we also want to make sure that the students that we take are, uh, are capable of taking the, the, the pressure and the, the standard of uh, SNE here. And we always have this evolving curriculum. I mean, we evolve it every year. We focus on updated uh, content and updating technology. So it's not like we uh, we teach something today and then we repeat that uh, next year as well. So we try our level best to, um, to update our curriculum. And we also have this cooperation with industry where our students take part in industry projects 
where they take the problems from industry and then they work on those problems to solve uh, to solve them and to have this research experience with industry. So it gives them both exposure to the industry and to um, to to polish their skills as well. So in admission requirements, we have two kind of requirements. Uh, one is essential and second one is preferable. In essential, we want the students to have at least over one year of experience in network administration and development. We need that because the type of experiments that we do, the type of hands-on uh, labs that we do, they require uh, experience. If you're not experienced, then it will be very hard for you as a student to to take on those experiments. That is why we need uh, some basic experience in in industry before joining us in the in the master's program. So our language of institution is English, and then we need to we need to have uh, upper intermediate level of English. Of course, if you have IELTS or TOEFL, that are acceptable. Um, but if you don't have those uh, those scores and you're good in English, then we can consider you too. And other knowledge of protocols, for example, TCP IP, uh, uh, TCP IP layers and their protocols and everything regarding internet is also essential. Otherwise, uh, it will be hard for the candidates to, to cope, uh, co cope with these challenges while studying here. Skills in Linux-based operating system are essential. We work only with Linux. That is why uh, the, the, the students must be familiar with these uh, operating systems. And programming skills, we require both low-level and high-level languages. In low-level, we focus on C, C++, or we also need to have web application development skills, for example, in Python, in JavaScript, in Ruby, and so forth. So these um, requirements are essential for us. Additionally, we also need to have um, some knowledge of algebra and discrete mathematics because we use that uh, in, in different courses that we will look into in a moment. And in addition to all these, uh, the applicant should also be very uh, critical about problem solving uh, in analyzing tools and analyzing data and so forth. Uh, so these are the requirements that we need from an applicant while uh, applying for admission. In preferred requirements, uh, we need to have soft, software security uh, background, uh, some experience in practical security, for example, pen testing, and some code re review, for example, static or dynamic review. Uh, if the students, if they have participated or participating in CTF competition, that will be great as well for us. So these are the requirements that we need to have uh, from students that are going to apply in SNE program. So what is the selection process for us? First of all, there's an SNE exam uh, that is online. After that exam, for local candidates, uh, if they go through that exam and if they pass it, then uh, we have this on-site uh, procedure that consists of uh, two days uh, exams and interview. So there are a total of, I think, five to seven more exams that we take on site. And then there's an English, uh, English test uh, where you'll be tested for your uh, level of English. And then you'll have an interview with the professor that would probably be me. Uh, and we could have interview with other lab teachers or professors as well. And then after that, there will be an SNE presentation and question and answer session, and there will be a psychological test as well. As far as um, international students are concerned, they will take that online test and then uh, their documents will be screened. If they're shortlisted, they will have uh, an intake interview with a professor and with the lab teachers. And they will have another psychological interview with the uh, with the HR department as well. And after that, if they, uh, if they got selected, they will have a feedback from the admission department uh, in due course. 
So this was all about admission. Now uh, let me talk to you about the program itself. Um, so there are two tracks actually in SNE program. One is security track and another one is networking track. But at the moment we are running only security track. And in security track, we focus mainly on digital security. We focus on forensics and offensive technologies. Uh, for these topics, we have courses such as system and network security. We have forensics and offensive technologies. And these are the courses that we cover. Uh, and in networking track, it shares about 80% uh, of the content with security track, but it covers in depth TCP, IP in, in detail, and it also covers wireless technologies as well. So there are two specialist courses that are covered in uh, networking track that are I and R, internal networking and routing. And the second one is special topics in advanced networking that covers different other topics. So this is the schedule. Uh, we have a block concept instead of semester. Our block is two months long. And in each block, we have two courses. For example, you can see here in the first year, in the first semester, we have three blocks. September and October, it has two courses, advanced networking and classical internet applications. And in the November and December block, we have security of system networks and distributed systems. And after that, we have research project. And I'll, I'll talk about research projects in a moment. In the, in the second semester, we have again three blocks. And the first block is in February and March, which consists of uh, large installation administration and uh, cybercrime and forensics. And the second block, uh, it's in April and May. It has advanced security and special topics in uh, advanced networking for networking. And uh, in parallel, we have offensive technologies as well. When these blocks are over, the students will take uh, RP2, which is research project two that is taken with the industry rather than with the university. So how do we execute the plan? We have two parts, uh, theory and practice or lab exercises. In theory, we teach for six weeks actually uh, in 20 hours per week where we take lectures for two days. Uh, that are two plus two hours and four plus four hours lab exercises and practical work. And there's eight hours of private study per week. So all these together, it constitute 20 hours per week. And this is for two courses. So we give, uh, we usually may give or may not give one week for exam preparation. And the last week, which is the eighth week of the block, it is exam week. So uh, th there are projects and practical courses. Uh, well, as I said, there are four plus four hours uh, of lab for each course. And then in these uh, practicals, you will be spending time in lab to perform different hands-on uh, exercises to, um, to increase your skills or to improve your skills um, in different domains. That depends on the course that you're taking at the moment. And there are also projects, other than research projects in individual courses, which are aimed to improve your teamwork skills, communication skills, presentation, and technical report writing skills. Uh, so there are two research projects, uh, which is research project one, we call it RP1, and there's a research project two, RP2. Research project one is usually undertaken at the end of December and uh, in January every year. And what we do is that we provide you with a list of uh, topics that you can conduct research on, or you can come up with your own research problems. So there's a committee that decide whether the project is good to go or it needs enhancement and so forth. But once the topic is decided, you, you do the problem definition uh, in the first week or then in the second and third week you conduct the real research and then in the fourth week you write a report and then you present all your findings um, in form of presentation in front of everybody. So this uh, outline is just a recommendation from us. You can have your own uh, outline for uh, execution of the project. It depends. 
And then we have another day which we call the fifth day. So in the four days of a week, which is usually Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, we take courses and we do the lab exercises. And then we have the fifth day, which is usually Wednesday, but it depends. It's not necessarily Wednesday. On this uh, fifth day, what we do, we have uh, guest lectures, we have site visits, we have research presentations, we have private study and so forth. So we could invite some guests uh, who are uh, experts in different domains and they could talk about their research or they could talk about any topic. It depends, but we call this a fifth day or colloquium. So in essence, we just arrange um, invited lectures on this day. So now let's talk about uh, individual courses. What exactly do we cover in these courses? First, uh, starting with advanced networking. As I said, the prerequisite for uh, SNE is uh, networking knowledge, uh, TCP, IP, and so forth. So what we cover in advanced networking is the addressing in detail, routing in detail, BGP, large networks, and so forth, optical networks, wireless networks, and so forth, but from different perspective than you would have taken in undergraduate courses. Then we have classical internet applications. Uh, well, there's a uh, booting, there's a DNS and secure DNS, email, web, and directories. The, these are the major topics that we cover, but these topics are covered in a tiny little details. So we go to the minute details of these topics and the students, they usually they uh, implement and they configure their own servers. So they have access to their own physical servers and they make their own applications on this. For example, if you are talking about DNS or DNSSEC, then the students have their own DNS servers that, that they maintain for the whole year. And same goes for email and web and directories and so forth. So when we cover these topics, these topics are covered in a great detail. Then going to the security of system and networks. Uh, in security of system network course, we usually cover applied cryptography. We cover protocols, for example, IPsec, SSL, TLS, and so forth. We cover authentication. We cover some hacking tools. We talk about passwords. And then we have a mini project as well. So all these topics are very bird's view of the, of the topic, but we cover it in a great detail and we, we don't let anything so uh, because these these courses are prerequisite for the later courses that is why we need to cover them in great detail then we have distributed systems where we cover different aspects of distributed systems such as communication naming synchronization consistency and replication fault tol tolerance and then we cover security as well so because later on when we will have large installation administration course in that course we use the ideas from from distributed systems course and I'd like to tell you that um, you can choose your own path after doing um, SNE masters. But if you want to go, for example, towards cloud computing or uh, other distributed systems, blockchain and everything, then you need to know um, basics and even advance about distributed systems and other courses, large installation administration. That is why we need, need to include these courses as well. Uh, then we have large installation administration. As I said, uh, it covers uh, cloud computing, data centers, disaster recovery, scalability, change management, ethics, and so forth. So we cover uh, these topics in uh, in LIA or large installation administration and there's a mini project as well Offensive technology is one of the most interesting uh, courses in SNE um, well, we do some uh, Ethical hacking into into stuff for example sniffing the network uh, We cover intrusion detections for example. We talk about hacker mindset. We talk about malware We talk about botnets and we perform some mini projects as well, but all of these uh, are done within the realm of uh, ethics. We also have INR, which we currently don't uh, follow because we don't have networking track at, at the moment, but we may have. 
uh, which covers physical and logical structure of the internet, some addressing, some layer two in loop prevention, layer three routing, uh, interior routing, exterior right, routing, for example, OSPF, BGP, RIP, and so forth. So we cover these sort of topics in, um, <coughs> in INR. We have advanced networking uh, as well. I think we uh, I already covered, but uh, well, we cover optical technology, light path, uh, in-depth TCP, wireless networking, and so forth. We have CCF, uh, cyber crimes and forensics. We, are co we cover uh, information gathering, uh, how to gather digital information, how, how to analyze digital information, how to get uh, meanings out of it, how to timeline, how to trap, uh, avoidance, how to uh, use file systems, and so forth. And there's a mini project in this course as well. We have advanced security where we cover different uh, security architectures. For example, we cover wireless security, we cover GSM security, we cover embedded security, Internet of Things, and so forth. And there's some special topics as well. For example, we could cover LoRa, uh, low power radios, uh, we could cover Bluetooth, we could cover many other technologies as well. And we have apparatus for that. So whatever technology we talk about, uh, students can do hands-on experience on those technologies. So uh, in research project one, uh, as I uh, told you before, um, there's a problem definition that could come either from us, uh, the team of SNE, or you could come up with your own project. For example, you could work on RFID cards, you could work on detection of peer-to-peer -peer botnets, you could work on smart metering, you could work on uh, wireless protocol analysis using GNU radio, uh, and there are a lot of uh, more uh, topics that you could work on. There's a, a website where you can find the list of uh, all the projects that our students have done so far. And the research project too is basically with industry, as I told you before. So what we do, we gather real-time problems from industry and then we present it to our students. So if the students are interested, they could work on those projects and they could be exposed to industry environment at the same time when they're students. So the supervisor will be faculty member, but shepherd or helper will be from uh, industry as well. There are some projects that were carried out before. These are basically RP1, both RP1 and RP2s. Uh, for example, some of our projects, some of our good projects that were carried out by our students include uh, security in public places. For example, uh, two of our students, they um, they proposed a framework and implemented a framework where you could identify drug intoxication just by looking at your pupil size, just by looking at your eye. So it could take the picture of your eyes and it could say whether you're drug intoxicated or not. Uh, some other of our students, they work on file system based on social network media storage. They exploited the social net uh, network media to store uh, terabytes of their data. So they were using social media as the media storage. Uh, some other students, they work or, on neural cryptography and they, um, well, they just did security analysis for that and found some uh, secu security vulnerabilities. Uh, another project was backdooring asymmetric crypto algorithms uh, while other was spoofing Android camera and so forth. There's so many other projects that you can uh, look at. So there's a other list of the projects, but the, the, the list is too long. Uh, you can go to the website that uh, the address is given on the previous slide and you can see what projects have been done so far. So there are some rules and procedures for SNE. Uh, for example, we have open lab environment. Uh, we have scheduled production environment. And well, everybody should be responsible and do not engage in activities that go beyond the rules and policies of SNE and Innopolis University because we are very particular about that. So this is the current team, uh, me, myself, uh, I'm the coordinator and professor at um, SNE. There's a 
Anatoly Litikoshin, uh, who is our researcher and lab teacher. There's another lab teacher, Kirill, and Kamal Batul is my PhD student, and she's a lab teacher as well. Probably we will have another professor and other set of uh, lab teachers, so we will have an enhanced team uh, in the coming year. So here's the contact information. You can uh, write an email to me or you can write email to Marina. Uh, we would be happy to respond to any of uh, your query that you have. So this was all from me. Um, uh, so yes, so off to Marina now. Um, thank you very much for the beautiful presentation. Uh, so, hello everyone, my name is Marina Kozlova, I'm from the admission office uh, from Minneapolis University. So, just a couple of things that I want to mention before we go to the questions that you, I think you have. So, uh, uh, you need to go to uh, apply.annapolis.ru to uh, apply for this program, for the SNE program. So that's our official website where you uh, fill your application and uh, download your CV and motivation letter and go to through the uh, tests, like English test and also the SNE exam. And um, so uh, as um, Rashid said before, we have two steps to go through the admission procedure to enter the university. So the first step is, is go through the online procedure uh, that is on applied.ampus.ru where you uh, download your CV and other uh, documents. And then uh, we have the on-site round in Naples and it goes uh, every month and uh, the upcoming selection will be on May 11th. And um, you can apply now, as I said before. And we're planning to finish in July. So you still have time to uh, get prepared for the selection round. All the information you can find on our website and also on your account when you create it. And so if you have any question about the admission procedure or about the uh, admission process, like what kind of questions Rashid asks during the interviews or uh, what kind of projects, um, like more projects we have here. So uh, we're ready for your questions. Thank you very much.